What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, Legendary Talks here, episode 79. Uh, We have the amazing Mike Melvin today. Very excited to chat with him. Hope everyone's doing okay. Um, It's a hot one here. I am drinking Belvedere and soda. What are you guys drinking? If so, hey Sarah. What are you drinking, Sarah? Um, yeah, we have Mike Malvin. He's, uh, you know, kind of one of the quintessential New York guys, although he's not from there. He's very New York, um, and I'm very excited to chat with him. Just about a lot of interesting, cool, cultural things. Um, I think he just joined, actually. Perfect. I'm going to request him. Fun chat. Getting ready for my hundredth episode in twenty-one more episodes. Very excited. Mike Melvin. <laughs> Yo. How are you? Let me see so let me try to get this angle right real quick. Hold on. All right. Well quiet too. Yeah, check it out. I don't know if you can hear me out here, but if you can hear me, it's quite lit out here. You're kind of quiet. I can hear you, but you're kind of quiet. All right. Well, maybe we'll start here, but I want to show. Let me show you this at least. Okay. Show me. Can I switch the? Um, can I switch? Like, uh, oh, here. I'll just show it this way. This is the new New York right here. It's just like the bar next door. Everybody's partying outside. It's crazy, bro. Well, I think that, you know, New York is going to get back to where it was in the 80s, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. If, I, I hope everybody can hear me. If you can't hear me, I'll go inside. It's, it's your, you're quiet. All right, hold on, hold on. I'll go inside. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll just do it in the back. Let me show everybody. That's much better. Always an original. We got Harold up here. Harold, we're going to talk about Harold and the parties in a minute, I would imagine. I'm going, I'm going to the back, back. Okay, cool. Giving us a tour, looks cool. Yeah, this is uh, WK. Boys cutting hair back here a little bit still. I'm going to find a spot. Uh, let me do it right here. Hold on a second, Damon. Hold on. Yo, guys, turn that, turn that down real quick. A true original, this one. What's up, Crazy Legs? What's up, Crazy Legs? Okay, so, first of all, thank you for doing this. Like you said, you've seen a few of them. And basically, what I'm doing is celebrating people that have been really important to culture. Um, Crazy Legs, who was my guest in one of the you know beginning episodes, you know, obviously... He's an amazing person, um, but also there's these people that are kind of known in the scene and in New York culture and really push and move culture, and that's what we're here to kind of have them tell their stories and to, to be celebrated because a lot of times they're not celebrated. These people, you know, the Maripools and the Debbie Mazars and things, some people don't even know their story. So, you know, we're really here to celebrate people of culture. So, And I thought that you'd be a great person to chat with. Thank you, Damon. Um, I, w- I like asking everyone this first question. Um, describe yourself. I'm sure there's people on here that don't know you, so describe yourself. Well, I would have to say I'm a pretty likable guy. You know what I mean? That's why everybody was coming to our parties back in the day. Um, or people person or whatever. I don't know. I'm, uh, you know, just doing my thing. You know what I mean? I'm on my business. Enjoy my life. I, take care of my family. I think that you are, um, you know, a really creative guy, too. I'm not sure that people know that. I know you well, but, I, you know, you're a really creative guy. I'm not sure that people really know that about you that don't know you that well, you know? Um, Okay, so I want to start in the beginning. You're from Virginia, right? Virginia Beach, Virginia. Okay. I've been in New York for like, uh, shit, I've probably known you 25 years. I've been in New York for about 30 years, probably. Okay, but I want to, I like, you know, I like discussing people's childhoods because I, I believe that that really shapes the creative adult. You know, your influences as a child really shape your creative adultness. Um, what do you think the main takeaway 
um, from, from Virginia was for you, like as a, a young person? I don't know. New York just opened my mind to uh, all kinds of, you know, things, you know what I mean? Like, um, even like simple as better weed. Like, I just, yeah. you know, I came to New York, you know, meeting rappers and hanging out with Method Man. And in Virginia, I just went to the Wu-Tang show and then becoming friends with these guys and just, you know, just, it, I don't know. New York is the shit. It's plain and simple. I first came to New York. Let me tell you this story. First came to New York. Um, for a Grateful Dead show at Madison Square Garden. I don't remember exactly what year that was, but I was like 16. We told my parents that we were staying at somebody else's house and we all jumped in the van and we drove up to a Grateful Dead show. So that's, uh, that's interesting there. Um, I can hear you. You're just a little quiet. Maybe can you move a little closer or something? Well, let me try to rearrange real quick because uh, that's... I think the people are going to have trouble hearing you. That, that seat that I was sitting on is about 400 pounds. Yeah. It's a barber chair, so it's quite heavy. Let me see something. How about, how about this one? Pull this one up a little bit. Nope. Let me see now. How about now? Louder? Yeah, that's better. Um, okay, and then one more question about Virginia. What um, what do you think stayed with you now that you still have with you that's from like a Virginia? Like I'm from Detroit and there are lots of things that are still with me from Detroit, you know, like that I take in, you know, the world, my world travels or whatever. What's something that always stayed with, stays with you even currently from Virginia? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess like the way I was raised, you know, my father's a yeah. gentleman and I still got that, um, you know, treat everybody with respect and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I still got that. And uh, Good. I'll never lose that, you know what I mean? Well, hey, let me ask um, you a question. I, I just tapped in. I know you do the question, what are you sipping on? Um, I'm having Belvedere and soda. What are you sipping on? I got that Sailor Jerry and Coke. Yeah, there you go. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so um, what's the first uh, like hip-hop song you remember? Mm. Shit. MC, you know, like uh, what's probably Ultramatic M MCs. Cool Keith. Oh, good. Like good one. Good. And then, um, what's the very first concert you ever went to? First what? Concert. Like a major, major one, probably Lollapalooza. Good. Who, who, headliner, what was that? Who was performing? Uh, Ministry of Sound, like that kind of vibe. Got it. Perry um, I mean, I, I probably, been, then, probably been, actually, you know what? I, I remember something. I went to uh, James Brown uh, concert when I was a little, little kid. So that was probably the first one. But uh, that wasn't really my thing. It was at King's Dominion or some shit like that. That's good. That's a good one, though. Um, I had Shadi Lipkot on here the other night, and she said her first concert was Michael Jackson off the wall. Like, that was amazing. Um, and then... I can think of, let me say a couple more things. I think Cindy Lauper, I can go deeper than that, but... Like for me, like when I was, you know, young kid, like what I was really into was probably the best one I remember was was Lollapalooza probably. Good. I mean, that's kind of like when you, you know, like someone probably took you to Cindy Lauper. You probably went to a bunch of concerts. I think about it. You probably went to Lollapalooza on your own. Someone probably took you to Cindy Lauper. That's my parents type shit. And then is there like a movie or like a movie that you kind of related to as a kid or, you know, like. Last Dragon was your favorite movie. What, what was the kind of like movie that kind of defined you as a kid? King of New York, Christopher Walken. Okay. Um, uh, Abel Ferreira was the director. Like, oh, that whole like Abel Ferreira era was like, you know, that was my yeah. thing. Someone said Porky's, that's funny. Yeah, um, yeah. Porky's was definitely, uh, no doubt about it, Porky's. That's something. And what's the first music video you remember really kind of blowing your mind? Probably like like again like the way when I was like you know growing up probably any Wu Tang video or you know that kind of that just blew my mind like I never that was amazing never seen yeah. anything like it. And then is there anyone you looked up to at that time kind of growing up as a, you know like 10, 14 year old, thirteen year old could be a rapper could be a family member is there anyone that you kind of like look you know looked up to basically? I can see a lot of people, but rest in peace, Jake Burton. The Godfather of snowboarding, like I became yeah. very good friends with him, and uh, you know, when I was that age, I loved snowboarding, and that was my thing. You know, so Jake was the man. And then, when's the first time you came to New York? 
I came a few times as a kid with my parents, like, uh, but like I said, I was probably like 15 when I came on my own to that Great for Dead show. And um, what was your first impression of New York, like, you know, I guess to the Grateful Dead at that time? Well, I'll tell you the story is uh, we're coming out of the Grateful Dead show, tripping on acid, like, <laughs> while and out as little kids. And uh, this cab driver cut my friend off and uh, he kicked the cab car. And the cab driver got out of the car and just punched him in the face. And then I punched that guy in the face. And it was just like, yes. Like, I'm well, like I love it here. I'm here, baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I want to live here. Yeah. Um, and then I met you, I thought, when you were um, living in Atlanta, I had thought, and you were coming back and forth. Were you doing that at one point? My brother was in Atlanta, and uh, my sister was in Atlanta going to college. And um, I used to go visit them, but I was never okay. an Atlanta guy myself. But, uh, you know, like, okay. Dax is a – guys like Dax and Big Boy, yep. and, like friends to this day, you know. But – um. No, was not, I never really lived in Atlanta. I just stayed in okay. here and there. So you moved from where, Virginia to New York? Uh, Virginia, actually to New Brunswick, New Jersey. I was like um, managing a snowboard shop called Earthcore and uh, got kind of came with a U-Haul trailer in my little Boston Terrier and set up shop there. It was 45 minutes from the city. So I was, you know, partying in the city and doing parties in the city. And But I'd always have like a nice place to stay and just, you know, comfort zone. So I'd have to go. A lot of people moved to New York and they... You know, they spend, you know, $2,500 on a one-bedroom apartment or whatever it is, and they just get chewed up and spit out. I wasn't going that route. You know, I, I, did, it, I did it safe. Good. That's, that's very, yeah, very safe of you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't you know, envision that. It's good. It's smart. Well, I, had a job, yeah. I, got, I got a job offer at the, at the snowboard shop, so I was like, fuck it. I'll take that shit. And then when did you finally move to New York? It was so bad with... with uh, years and dates, but uh, I've been here like I've been in, in the city at least twenty five years. Yeah, and was that first well, since you lived in New York? Once you moved to New York, was a a kind of a transition from New Jersey? Like that first, I would say that first year in New York, kind of you learned everything you need to know. You know, so you'd been in New Jersey, which you were kind of getting your feet wet. But when you moved to New York, was that first year kind of a challenge, or was it kind of you know easy breezy? No, no bro, I, I literally had it dialed in. Like I mean, I don't. Don't mean to keep going back to the weed thing, but I had like this dudes from Kingpin, this clothing company that had like the firest weed. Like nobody in New York had this type of weed, so I was buying weed from them and like, you know, so I was selling weed to Method Man and like just the weed game like opened up so many doors before I worked with Echo and did anything else. Like I just nobody had the weed I had, and I, you know, you know me, I smoked that weed a lot, you know. So you know now it's a different game. Anybody can get good weed these days, but back then and. You didn't have a good week and that you wasn't shit. Um, okay, so what's your first memory of me? What, like, what, do you have any, rec what's your first recollection? I'm not going to say I'm like fried from the weed, but like, I really don't even know how we met each other. Yeah, but okay. I, I, I mean, my, first, my first memory is when we did that, uh, that Frank 151, like office photo shoot. And you, uh, I'm sure I knew you before, but the first thing I can think of is when I when I when I named you Hot Boy, I remember it was like you know the twenty or fifty coolest people in New York, and we all had these like tag names, and you gave me Hot Boy. I remember. Yeah. Um, and so I think I remember you from just coming to the parties. You were just like a guy coming to the parties, cool, you know, kind of like you know hip hop kind of white boy and that kind of thing. And you know, I just kind of remember. I remember liking you. We connected. I think. You mean? Yeah. Off of that. You've always been very, very cool to me. I've always been the same to you. I feel you know we we're, we're friends, bro. Mm hmm. Um, and then, so let's, uh, so Frank 151 is, uh, a magazine that you started and it's, it was such an amazing cultural thing and ahead of its time at that time. I thought it was such a cool thing. Um, and you know, it was a really creative, but really cool downtown, really interesting magazine, you know, and it was great. And it was, that was a moment in time in New York. I think that represents a very specific moment in time for me, at least. You mean? That, start, that started in 1999, and, like, I don't take credit for what other people did. But my brother actually started that as an art, going back to Atlanta, as an art project. Uh, I think it was the Art Institute of Atlanta or something that my brother and sister were going to. And yeah. um, he started it, and it was just, like, you know, a class project, start a magazine, design a magazine. He showed me some layouts, and I had a little money. And I said, let's make this a reality. And uh, yeah. going back to Kingpin again, 
our first advertiser was Kingpin, and then they went into Jordan and Scion and Sprite and turned into an advertising agency and, you know. You know, it was a moment in time, like I said, it was very cool and very innovative and ahead of its time in a lot of ways and great. Um, okay, so let's talk about Spread. So Spread is a party. Was that party called anything? No. Was it called? T Tuesdays at Spread, I think. So I have a lot to say about that party. So best you and I have got best parties cool. ever in New York City, I promise you that. You know that. What'd you say? I said one of the best parties ever in New York City. Especially I agree. It was great, though. The party was only about a year, year and a half, right? Uh, I think it was a little longer than that. Okay. It was short, though. It wasn't like a, a long, long party. So I have a lot to say about that. So um, you and I had gotten cool. I was in the ma magazine a couple of times. We were just cool. And you said to me, you said, hey, I'm doing this party. Why don't, why don't you get down with it? And at that point, I had been doing the door, and I was doing the door like seven nights a week at all the hip-hop parties, but I had never promoted a party. It was the first party I ever, first party I ever promoted Zoe, was that Zoe party. Zoya was working the door. Zoya was working the door, who was an amazing door person, by the way. And um, so Red, who's on here, my friend Elizabeth Red, she lived around the corner from the spread, and I was in Harlem, and you said, come by tonight. I feel like coming by. I said, Red, go check out that party. Let me know what's up, if I, if I should do it or not. She went there. She kind of did a walk through. She called me back. She goes, yeah, you know, it's cool. It's cool. A lot of people smoking weed, but it's got potential. You should do it. So the next week I did it. And, you know, how I kind of remember the story is that it was like the first week was maybe like 150 people. Second week, 300. Next week, 800. Next week, 1,000. Like it was like so skyrocketed, right? And that party was very unique and special. And it was kind of like similar to the magazine where it was like very cool a lot, I mean, just it's such a great mix of people. And, you know, like I, the first time I ever heard Beverly Von Spin was there. Um, you know, like we talked about earlier, Puffy bought at the bar one night for to keep it open. It was, and it was such a, just just a night, real New York party. Night came another night and bought the bar out again. That party Who was did? Suge Knight. Yeah. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. I remember Too Short. I remember, I met Too Short there. Prodigy, fucking... Brand Nubian. I mean, every underground rapper, P.F. Cutting, uh, Blue Bish, Scam Dust, everybody was at that party. I mean, like, across the board. And the, you know what the coolest part about that party was? We had Mihoko DJing in, the, um, uh, DJing in the downstairs. So I had the Japanese friends, and she had the Japanese friends. So the Japanese vibe was just so popping in there. Like, you did all, like, more hood parties and da-da-da. You know, you've done all kinds of parties, but at that time, it was like, the hood parties or the whack, like kind of white parties or, you know, the gay parties or whatever. It, this was Japanese vibe, you know, gay, straight, black, white, rich, you know. But one thing that Zoya was sure about is a bunch of dudes weren't getting in there. So, you know, oh, was messy. and then it was a sushi spot upstairs. It was crazy, bro. No, because it was such a New York story. Basically, it was this restaurant that we all turned into this insane party. You know, like, it would be like a restaurant the next day. Like, you don't realize that, you know, Puffy was standing on a couch there, you know, 12 hours before you were there. You were there. Um, well, I remember... Let me say one more time. time. Real quick, sorry. I, I live on 35th and uh, 3rd. So I actually just went in there and had some sushi one night, and the sushi was bomb. And I said, I met the owner. I forget what the guy's name. Remember that crazy uh, blonde hair guy? Yeah, he used to give us the checks every Friday or whatever. I forget his name, but um, I said, this basement's amazing, but we can do a cool-ass party here. He goes, you know, I'll give you a percentage of the bar, like form a team. So that's what we did. Well, you know, and again, like I said, Cleese came all the time. Pharrell was coming. It was like it was celebrity pack over the course of like two or three weeks, literally like two or three weeks, and blew the frick up. And again, Zoya at the door was a, like the best case scenario. She was so tight and so good at that door. Yeah. And it was a real New York moment because it was a restaurant that turned into this crazy, insane, amazing party, you know? So New York, you know? Yeah, the reason why I said 35th and 3rd is like, why would we do a party on 24th and 3rd? Like, nobody was doing any party anywhere on that side of the city. It was like nothing there. It was like on the west side or meatpacking yep. or, yep. you know, I just found that spot and, and he had a great attitude. I said, let's get it. No, like I said, though, Beverly Vaughn, she was spinning upstairs. She was spinning only 45s and she was spinning prints one night, the whole night. I remember that's the first time I ever heard her spin. Um, and then, Frank Roberts came one night. Um, I don't know if you know Frank, but Frank is a good friend of mine. And he came, and he was starting Lotus about two or three weeks later. And he ca called me the next day. He's like, hey, it was at your party last night at Spread. I'm doing this party at Lotus. You should, you know, do you want to get down with it? And then I am doing Lotus for seven years. So, I think that party went for a few years. But one thing that I do know is we did it for a while. And then, you know, I don't want to bring up anything negative right now. But 
September 11th, 2001 hit. And that was on a Tuesday. And we had been doing it for a long time, like at least a year or more. And then we, like no one, like if it was a hurricane, we would call each other and be like, hey, we're going to do the party, it's a hurricane. Or no, we're not going to do it. But when 9-11 hit, nobody called each other for two weeks. I'm the one that made the call. I said, yo, fuck this shit. Let's do the party next Tuesday. Everybody said, let's do it. And that was one of the most memorable parties that we've ever done, I've ever done. Everybody, there was no, not one party had happened since 9-11. And we set that bitch off, right? Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Yeah, that's right. what people needed. That's what people needed yeah, at that people point. People needed you know, to get like, back to normal. You know what I mean? Well, they also needed to see each other and, you know, communicate. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that was just an, it was an amazing moment in time. And like I said earlier, you know, you are a visionary to even think to ask me to promote the party as opposed to doing the door. I did the door at all. I was a door person at that point, you know? And it was your idea <laughs> to have me um, promote the party. And then that spawned so many other things, and you know that you know you were a visionary. Yeah, no, it was your I, idea? I, I, my my goal was to put together the dream team for that party, and, and it, it really worked. And in, in, in my head, I just realized Zoya worked the door because I was thinking this whole time you worked the door. But if you worked the door seven nights a week at all these other places, and you, and, I, and we're splitting bread for you to promote on this party, obviously you're seeing all the who's who seven days a week, and you're gonna bring them there if the party's popping. So, you know, smart guy, smart guy. And then, um, yeah, I just think that, like I said, I think you're a visionary and I want, you know, I don't, I want to make sure that people really get that part of the story, you know, so, um, and you know, a really creative guy, you, you, you've had, you know, really good insight for many years. Um, what are some other parties that like you remember some of the clubs besides, you know, obviously spread, like what are some standout clubs that you remember? I said blue bitch's name earlier and I kind of jumped the gun on that. I meant to say, yeah, he was on the top of my mind, but we did a party for about four or five years on Saturday night at the limelight. Like literally, my uh, my second daughter was being born in the hospital, and I'm in the limelight on Saturday night. I see him, motherfuckers, went straight to the hospital. You know, I'm like, it's time, not to the hospital, I'll get my wife, boom. But you know, what I mean, like it's it's um, uh, it was just a crazy time. It was it was like the hip hop room in the chapel at the limelight. And we had like, you know, Donald Trump's daughter and I mean, Nemo and just so many people and like Necro and DJ Premier and Tony Touch. Every week was a big DJ and a underground hip hop host. So it could be like DJ Premier and Necro hosting, not rapping, just hosting. So it was like crazy, but it was like the main room, you know, the s &M room upstairs, the, you know, this room, that room, fucking the shit was just crazy in there. We did it for many years. And that was definitely one of my, my other favorite parties. But uh, My first job in New York was at the limelight doing the guest list when I was 18. Someone just told me actually uh, off, off subject, I mean on subject, uh, the limelight Peter Gation documentary. I, I've never even seen it. Uh, his daughter did it. Jen Gation did it. The, if we're talking about the same one, Jen Ga his daughter made a documentary about him. It's called The Limelight, right? I'm gonna watch I think, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. watching that tonight, by the way, but anyway. Um, wait, getting back to Spread before I forget. So Spread, I remember it as you, uh, Coltrane, and me. Who else was involved in that party? Coltrane was a promoter, I remember that. Coltrane, me, you. Um, I think I, that's it. I, I, I gave a little, like, a uh, few bucks to some of these Japanese kids, but yeah, that was pretty much but it. But I think it was just the three of us, I remember correctly, which is yeah. actually a great combination if you think about it. The, no. the three of us together is a great combo, to be honest. How, how about this one? What about the invites? I went to oh, yeah. Dapp Dapper Dan and bought fabric from him. Yep. We had the Gucci fabric, the Louis yep. fabric, and yep. like that ill Dapper Dan fucking yep. rip. And we yep. taped those on to cardboard with the printout on the back. And we'd go to, you know, you would have a stack and we'd go to all the clubs and beautiful people, you know what I mean? And we'd just give them to them. And it was like, what? Like a Gucci, a Gucci yep. fucking like, Yep. Original oh, they're amazing. Dan. Like you you have one of those left somehow? I have a I don't have a like a leather one, but I have yeah, I have like a you know black and white one. I have one somewhere. Yeah, yeah, man. I love it. Paul Train and I keep sending it back and forth. I don't know if he had it or I had it, but we have a picture we keep sending back and forth. I got, I'm not sure I got, if it, I got a junk box of a bunch of stuff from that era, and I guarantee I got a couple of them. But it was you know, like I remember the red Gucci leather I remember. you know, like this big. Yep. They were amazing, you're right. Um, okay, so you opened Frank's Chop Shop in what year? 2005. 
and explain the concept, explain why you did it, you know. Well, I mean, I guess going back to, you know, the, you know, Frank 151 days in the advertising agency, like, you know, my brother and I, we, we split up in 2010. And, um, you know, we still got mad love for each other. But, you know, business was, you know, we had like a peaceful divorce or something like, we, you know, yeah. we were button heads a little bit. So we split and then I took like, you know, this, this settlement and 100% of the chop shop. And I said, you know what, I'm going back to the roots of what I do. The people person, you know, da da da. So people, you know, they, if they can show me love, they will in most, in most cases. So I said, I'm going back to the basics. I got a barbershop. I meet people here. You know, you need a haircut. Why not get it from me? And, I, yeah. and, I, and I've been just super comfortable and just very happy here since then. You know, I mean, like, this is my hub. I sit outside and just talk to the freaks in the neighborhood and gangsters coming around and customers. I just love it here, man. I don't want to get a minute of this. And then there's one in L.A. as well, right? The one in L.A. is still fucked up with COVID, but I got uh, four in Japan that are doing very good. Kyoto, Okinawa, Kagoshima, and um, Fukuoka. Great. I'll post it tonight. Uh, I'll, you know, where the location is so in case people want to, you know, go or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, it's been really successful, I think. You know, I remember when it started, people, so much buzz about it. Everyone saying Frank Shop Shop. It had such a great buzz. It was a really amazing thing. I mean, I mean yeah, just the opening, we had, like, you know, Booyah Tribe, Futura. Like, I mean, I, I don't know if you came or not, but... I mean, you know, Ricky Powell, who's, I could just go on and on. There was like literally in a neighborhood, this neighborhood, there's nobody here. Same thing like with Spread Concept. There's nobody yeah. here in that neighborhood, bro. I mean, only thing was anything. When somebody put some anything stickers up all over the, the block today, so maybe anything's coming back. But anything with Aaron and all that, that was the only thing on this block. I mean, the only thing in this whole neighborhood. But anyway, uh, you know, we, we had 500 people out front, and it was just such support and and then we got number one barbershop in New York Magazine, you know, like the best of. Like Amazing. Best, uh, best haircut, best, you know, most. Uh, and then, then from then on, it was just auto autopilot. Good. Um, okay, so um, what do you see, like, for the future for yourself? Like, what do, you, what do you want for the future, you know? To be honest with you, man, I'm about to go to Japan. Uh, I, I already own a house in Fukuoka, Japan. Um, you know, you know all the money from the last four years of doing these shops I have in Japanese bank accounts. Um, I'm ready to go, man. Like uh, my my new thing is fishing. Uh, it's called Frank's Fish Club. You gotta check it out. But we're killing the fish, man. You know, you have no idea. Like when I say killing them, we mostly release, but we do eat some. But uh, we're killing the fish game. Like, and we have all this whole Instagram page and uh, I'm doing a YouTube page. And that's what I want to do in Japan. I want to live in Fukuoka and then vacation Okinawa and just fish, yeah. chill, hammock, grow weed or something. I don't know. That's yeah. legal there. But, you know, just the easy life. I'm 46 like years old. Sounds like retirement, early yeah. retirement. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to retire. Um, okay, a couple questions unrelated. Top five rappers of all time. Big L, Cool Keith, Sean Price. Oh, uh, man. That one thing in this barbershop we're not allowed to talk about is religion, top five rappers, politics. But I gave you, what, three right there? Yeah. Um, Prodigy. Something like Ill Bill, but I love Ill Bill, but I like that kind of vibe. I mean, I, I'll throw Ill Bill in there, but uh, all five of those, I could go into 15 of that, but that's the first five that came up the top of my head. Good. No, no, good answers and quick. Usually people take a really long time to answer everything. Um, I I want to ask you, but you know, I, I'm not sure you'll be able to answer it. Uh, the, the, the best, the five best parties you've ever been to, ever. Could be your, could be spread, a nice spread, could be... A, you know, uh, Diddy's birthday, five best parties you've ever been to. Diddy's birthday, great story. I went to Diddy's birthday in Miami, one of the best parties <laughs> I've ever been to. Because I, of then, course. Then the, the, boat, the, the boat was going, you know, taking people out. 
I got on the boat with Diddy. I peed off the back of the boat because that's what I do. I fish, you know what I mean? I pee off the back of the boat, big deal. People was in the bathroom doing blow and shit. I couldn't get in the bathroom. Pee off the back of the boat, and then I got banned from Diddy's house for life. Because <laughs> he hates when people pee off his boat. But anyway, that was one of them. Um, that's, first of all, that story, none of it surprised me. I can, I mean, like, you know, I could have told you well, that I grew story. I in Virginia, man. We pee off the back of boats. That's what we do, <clears> dog. <throat> so funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's nothing. I wasn't like, nobody saw me. I was on the back of the boat in the corner. Had to pee. But anyway, that's an interesting story. But, uh, shit, I don't know. Spread fucking Saturdays at Limelight. Imagine, I, I, I've been at so many parties, bro. And like, and like, I know. like real talk, back in the day, I used to drink, uh, uh, like Grey Goose or Vodka and Red Bull. And you already know, I don't remember a lot of this shit. <laughs> I mean, I was having fun, believe me. I hope I didn't do too much crazy shit, but I mean, I remember stuff, but like at the end of the day, like I've been to so many fucking parties. I mean, I would, I would imagine that average, I went out three or four nights a week. Yeah. For the last definitely. 20 years. You definitely did. You went out more than that, I think. No, um, definitely not more than four because I have a little agreement. But I, I, I keep that to myself because I don't go out. If, if I go out more than four, then, it, you know, it can turn into seven. And, like, you know, I got to take care of myself. It's a slippery slope. I know. Trust it me. is. You're right. Um, <clears throat> I still look then, good, though, right? 46? Yeah, you're good. You're good. For a white boy, you look good. Tan, um, baby. Um, so who, in your opinion, are the five coolest people in New York like New York ever saw, like I would say, for instance, Lisa Cooper, me, you know, people, who are the five coolest ever to see me that New York ever saw? Could be yourself. Maripol, Jerry Dean, um, Scam Dust, Lord Isaac. I don't want to go too much. I would say Peter Green, but let me get, let me get off of those. You know, those three guys are like all best friends. And, you know, uh, let me say a couple more. I'll give you seven. You can more, yeah. uh, Serge Becker gets it. Um, Christian Alexander is my little buddy, you know. Yep. I'll give him some love. Um, damn. Come on, one That's more. Good. Yeah. That's good. That's good enough. Um, and then um, you mentioned Harold earlier. Um, Harold, friends with Harold. Harold. Yeah. Top of that list. Thank you. Were you close to Harold? Rick, Fleot, Akira, um, Akira from Supreme, Slick Rick from Supreme, a couple more. Uh, were you close with Harold? Yeah. Me and Harold were close as, we were thick as yeah. thieves, man. Yeah. We, we, we really loved each other a lot. Man. I loved him too. He was very special. Yeah. Very special. Um, and then one more question. If you could go to dinner with four people, Living or dead, anybody, who would it be? Harold, Prodigy, Murph Dog from LA, and uh, and you. Good, great, great answer. You're the only one um, alive, so, so it's gonna be a tough, uh, it's gonna be me and you. All I know, right? Passed away, but you know, we still have fun, you and I. Um, okay, then a couple other questions before we wrap it up. What are you grateful for right now in your life? My kids, my Great. business, my Rolex collection. Art, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Richard Hamilton. Richard Hamilton has uh, you know, passed away as well, but he's, I would like Richard to be at that dinner as well. Uh, All right. Richard Hamilton passed away, but he was a dear friend of mine. I have an amazing Richard Hamilton, Hamilton collection and uh, you know, you know, the ret whole retirement thing is, you know, it's not so much about the chop shop and the businesses, but it's the relationship Richard and I had, like, I've always looked out for Richard and, yeah. you know, so, you know, uh, I'm grateful for my art collection and that's, that's, I'm grateful that the Rolex was just a joke, but, um, no, no, I know. yeah, but, um, yeah, my art collection, um, my loved ones, my barbers, yeah, I, I really don't fuck with anybody else, my barbers, my family few friends but um you know I'm, i just like the way that I'm, I'm i'm grateful that i have a tight group of friends here that work with me and my family's obviously my family like you know my kids is on the way right now to have dinner after this i told them to come at 10 45 but they can wait a few minutes if you want to keep going but 
But anyway, no, yeah, no, no. I'm very happy, bro, in general. Like, I've never Good. been this happy in my life. I'm like, Good. I'm, I'm there. I'm ready to Good. go to Japan and do my thing. Um, and then one more question. What inspires you, like, right now in your life as well? Like, you know, in, in 2020. It doesn't have to be, you know, not COVID-related, but what, what inspires you the last year or two? What's been a, a big inspiration for you? Fishing. Straight up. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's all I've been doing. Like, we, we, we have, um, it's like, Frank's Fish Club or whatever. Like, follow it. But um, it's really just going out in the boat. And, like, literally, we fish between Battery Park and the Statue of Liberty or the Verrazano. So we're right in the heart. And we go out of Coney Island. We're right in the heart of New York City. But, like, any stress, drama, any – I don't really stress, but anything that I can possibly think of in the city that I don't want to deal with at that moment, it's right there. You see the Statue of Liberty. You see Battery Park. You see yeah. Governor's Island. You see the Arizona. But we're just banging fish. And it's with all close friends. And it's like, you know, Gorilla Nims, China Mac, Shice Bubs, Kid Chocolate, the boxer. Every week I, I, I curate a new trip. And uh, it's been a hell of a run. We've been fishing since right, right. I've been fishing my whole life. But we started this fish club right before like right when quarantine started. And, you know, even learned um, lockdown and all that shit, we still fish the whole time. You know, we, we're, that sounds amazing. Sounds actually very it's there, like, it's relaxing. It's yeah, there. exciting but relaxing at the same time. Sounds amazing. A good friend of mine, Kane Day Wiley, the painter, he's a big fisher as well. He's invited me to go fishing yeah, with him sometimes. Like, yo, you need to link me with him on the art game, for one. And on number two, I follow him and I see he fishes. I'm going tuna fishing on the 28th. I know he likes that. Me and all Japanese, I got three, like, gangster Japanese dudes coming with me on the 28th. But, like, I'd love to go fishing with them. Trust me. Like, any, any, like, you know, people are, like, weird about linking with the art game. And I think I asked you before because I had a buyer. But just tell him I want to go fishing with him. Okay. Then it's so on. He does, he does fishing. Yo, let me show um, P.F. Cutton real quick. P.F. Cutton used to be at the, uh, he just, he just tapped me. P.F. Cutton is one of my favorite DJs ever. And, uh. Yo, he used to do the limelight. He did all the all the mixtapes with uh, Frank 151 and Special Blend. It's called the Grown Man Series. P.F. Cutton is one of the illest DJs out of East New York. The illest DJ you ever fuck with, period. Um, any, uh, anyone you want to shout out that's on right now? My mom and dad and uh, P.F. Cutton. <laughs> Um, and then how, before we go, how can we support you? Like, you know, whether it be the chop shop or what's what, you know, none of us, you know, it's a weird time. No one's really working. What's the way we can support you right now? Well, I, like, I'm glad you said that because I kind of have this idea in my head because, you know, I'm never not working. But uh, anybody that sends me a DM and says, Damon, if they've never been here before, Frank's chop shop can get 50% off their first cut. Fair Great. Enough. Awesome. Just send a DM, Frank's chop shop, Damon. Cold word, fifty percent off their first cut. Actually, you knew not me when I was David. Cut, not all that shit. I've been here and all that. No, 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 no. Um, actually, when you knew me when I was Damon, now I'm the legendary Damon, by the way. So. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yo, you're hot boy. You'll never ever be anybody but hot boy. It, I know, I know. You did give me that name, it, and it's stuck. It says and hot it's stuck. boy. Um, any other way we can support you though, whether it be your fishing thing or you know, I'll post whatever you want me to post. The fish page, Frank's Fish Club. I mean, that's my new little thing. I'm just, it's my hobby. I'm passionate about it. Um, All right. That you know, I don't need nothing. Uh, I just, right. I want to like you know, like I said, I'll give a discount, fifty percent off. Anybody comes, you know. I'm. Just, Thank you. I appreciate that. And, but also, so you know, just before we we wrap it up, you know, this whole show, the whole premise of the show is to celebrate people that have been really important to culture, specifically New York culture the 90s, 2000s, and really kind of shifted and pushed and moved the culture. You're definitely one of those people. Um, I think you're, like I said, you're, you're uh, extreme visionary, and I don't think people kind of, some people don't really know that about you, and I want to make sure that people think of you that way. You have a really creative mind, um, and, you know, I think that you have done a lot for the culture in New York City, and you should be really proud of yourself. So we're here to celebrate you and, you know, say you know, you're great, so. I really appreciate that, because you know what, the, the reality of things is that I've done so many cool creative projects, and I've always, like, said it was Frank 151, or it was this, and it was that, and I, I'm, you know, the, kind of the, the mind behind it, but I never really took the credit for myself, and, um, you know, I appreciate that, man. I mean that, too. I really mean that. I think, you know, you have, you have a, a very creative mind, and I, like I said, I don't think a lot of people 
necessarily think that, you know, some people don't know that about you, basically, so. Right. And you listen, it was your idea that I promote your party, and as a result, now I'm this, you know, so <laughs> I've always been this, but, you know, but remember that. You can get, you get credit for that. You, I, my first party was with you, so. Really? Ever. The first party I ever promoted was, was just door, and then the first party you ever did was with me. Well, hey. Yep. I, I, I just make sure I get in your next party. Hey, I, I, how about, how about a good way? Shout out to Nate Bozrek. When we used to come down the fucking ramp at fucking lecture room with the bikes. Yeah. I remember. We used to pick the bikes up, put them inside the fucking ropes and go in there. The hot mess is coming to the... I know, the hot mess is coming to the... I remember. That's how I met my Japanese partner, actually. We were going to a lecture room. He was staying in the hotel. We ride the bikes down, scam me, Bose. And when we would, you know, pedal the bikes up or push them up, this guy goes, his name is Takato. He's a, a Fukuoka. He's my partner. He says, scam does? Scam does? And Scam's like, yeah. We, we go up to his, uh, his hotel room, chill out. And uh, next thing you know, we're partners like a year later. So shout out to Scam Dust. Scam Dust is one of the, follow Scam Dust if you want to support me. That's my brother. All right. S-K-A-M-D-U-S-T. All right, well, cheers to you. Cheers to creativity, New York City, and the future. Cheers. Much love, Damon. All right, thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you for doing this. Bye. Peace.